In this video, we'll talk about the Helicobacter pylori infection. Helicobacter pylori is a bacteria and it infects the stomach that can cause ulcers. About half the world population has Helicobacter pylori in their stomach, but not all of them show symptoms. So let's understand what are the symptoms of Helicobacter pylori infection. So the general symptom is ache and burning sensation in the abdomen and it worsen with the when the stomach is empty. Other than that, nausea, loss of appetite, bloating, and weight loss is kind of other symptoms of Helicobacter pylori infection. Let's talk about the transfer route of Helicobacter pylori. It could be fecal oral, gastric oral, it, should, it could be waterborne, and in rare cases, it could be oral oral or zoonotic mediated transfer. So once Helicobacter pylori enters our body, it survives the harsh environment in the stomach and it kind of erodes the lining of the stomach and ultimately it leads to formation of an gastric ulcer or a duodenal ulcer. Now let's try to understand the ulceration process in a bit more details and how Helicobacter pylori can survive in the harsh environment inside the stomach. Here is the gastric mucosa and you can see the mucosa lining which contains of several epithelial cells and several other cell types. Now this is the thick layer of mucus and even beyond the layer of mucus there would be gastric HCL in the stomach. Gastric HCL actually kills other bacteria but Helicobacter pylori can survive in this extremely uh, low pH environment and let me tell you how. Helicobacter pylori actually produces one enzyme known as urease which actually buffers the acidic environment inside the stomach and let me tell you how. So the urease enzyme can convert urea into ammonia and ammonia being basic can buffer the immediate surrounding of the uh, Helicobacter pylori and it can create a somewhat basic environment that allow the Helicobacter pylori to survive. Other than that, Helicobacter pylori expresses some adhesion molecules known as adhesins. This help the bacteria to attach to the epithelial cells and infect them. Helicobacter pylori has tufted flagella which helps in chemotaxis and penetrate this thick layer of mucus. Other than that, Helicobacter pylori secretes VAC-A and CAG-A which are two uh, cytotoxins which are responsible for the infection and the pathogenicity of this bacterium. So VAC-A can bind to the membrane of the bacteria and work as a adhesion molecule. So it allows the surface adhesion of this bacteria. VAC-A can also bind to specific receptors on the gastric mucosal cells and ultimately lead to an inflammatory signal and it leads to production of inflammatory cytokines which brings out inflammation in this local region. VAC-A can also bind to the mitochondrial membrane and allow the leakage of cytochrome C. So when cytochrome C is released, apoptosis is kind of triggered. Now we understand in the gastric mucosa there would be apoptosis of the cells, there would be inflammation and all this lead to further inflammation and leaking of the gastric HCL into the mucosa which ultimately leads to the ulcer formation and it gives you that pain sensation where you when your stomach is empty. Now let's talk about the diagnostic tests for Helicobacter pylori, how it is diagnosed. There are a few tests such as blood test which checks the antibodies of against H pylori in your blood. There is breath test there are several biomarkers in the breath which can give us a sense that whether you are infected with H, H. pylori or not. There could be also stool test where you provide your stool samples and the uh, antigen test looks for Helicobacter pylori antigen in the stool. But the best test for Helicobacter pylori is uh, endoscopy. Here, uh, here the doctor enters an uh, endoscope through your alimentary canal and try to visualize what happens in the stomach and he takes a small portion of the stomach and that is that is then sampled for or assayed for helicobacter pylori 
so there are small strips available and which is used to perform urease test as i have mentioned already that helicobacter pylori has urease enzyme so obviously here in this particular spot there is urea so if there is urease there would be ammonia production and the indicator which is present in this spot will change the color that simply boils down to if you have red coloration that means you have helicobacter pylori infection and it's positive but if the color comes to yellow that means you don't have any infection this is how we can rapidly understand whether there is an infection of helicobacter pylori or not let's talk about treatment option so obviously it's a bacteria then the treatment option is antibiotics but along with antibiotics a proton pump inhibitor can reduce the acidity in the uh, stomach and it can relieve the symptoms of ulceration among the common choice uh, of antibiotics amoxicillin uh, then clarithromycin metronidazole and tetracycline are some of the mostly used choices but uh, obviously it's important to consult a doctor for his or her opinion in this situation so i hope this video summarize the basics of helicobacter pylori infection if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up and you can get the notes and flashcards in the Facebook page. As usual, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Do let me know in the comment whether these are useful for you. You can support my channel on Patreon. I'm present in Unacademy, which is India's biggest online learning platform. You can take my courses by using my code AP10. You can get 10% discount. I'm also present in other social media links. All the links are provided in the description. Feel free to connect with me and see you in next